Hey everybody, how's it going? Today, let's take a look at this 2016 Mitsubishi L200 Warrior Double Cab. And this is going to be a full, in-depth tour of the L200. We'll start it up, show the engine, as well as show you a few of the features on the interior, as well as exterior. And before I begin, I'd like to give a big thanks to the D-Side Motor Centre, located in Connors Quay, North Wales, for allowing me to come out and film this car. For more information regarding current inventory and contact info, please check out the link in the description below. And so... Without further ado, let's get it started up and let it run. This vehicle does come equipped with keyless entry. It's unlocked at the moment. To lock, all you have to do is tap the black buttons on each of the front door handles. Then after waiting a second to unlock, just tap them again. Say black exterior. With black leather interior. Has just over 59,000 miles on the clock. Files right up. Leather wrapped steering wheel with silver accenting. Has a five speed automatic transmission with manual shift. And when you select reverse, brings up your backup camera with guidance lines. And we'll go ahead and turn on the automatic headlamps, front and rear fog lamps, and the hazards. Driver side window is automatic, and we'll go and check out the exterior, shall we? Seventeen inch wheels. It has been a while since I've done this generation of L200.
That's a 2.4 litre turbo diesel four cylinder engine. Puts out 178 brake horsepower. Does 0 to 60 in 11.8 seconds. And has a top speed of 109 miles an hour. Power windows. Fully powered driver's seat with side airbags. Perforated leather. Fuel cap release, lane departure assist, traction control, and power mirrors. I'm not going to do a noise test because it's running low on diesel, so let's move on. Dual zone, automatic climate control. Fan speed. Individual temperatures for both sides. different zones, AC on and off, recycling, front defrost, rear defrost, one touch automatic, and off altogether. Thought I might keep it on because it's very hot outside today. Okay. I saw a thing this week. Different uh, preset stations. Decent sounding audio system. <laughs> FM. And so to our first this evening, which come from John. Hello, John. Hello there. DAB Digital Radio. My question is that Malcolm Beige food bank should not need to exist. <laughs> For business. John, have you seen the food bank in, in operation? What's happening there? Uh, I've been involved with the food bank for about five years. Station list. We went through the roof during the pandemic. It's got back down. Uh, it's reduced in numbers now, but it's still a lot higher than it was in the, before the pandemic. And we're, we're supporting around about um, 300 households a month. CD player. People, um, it, it went down slightly in July, but it's come back again, up again in August. And we're expecting it to rise up in the autumn. Okay, John, thank you. So John's question. Sound settings. What think should be done to ensure Morgan Food Bank closes due to lack of business? Tracy Braben. Well, John, thank you very much for your uh, volunteering to help those at most need in the community. 
I'm really sorry, I can't give you a navigation because actually I think destination the bank is going to be needed more than ever before. We've had 12 years of a conservative government, we've got double digit inflation, we've got, as you said, people using food banks, energy costs about to go through the roof. Now, in West Yorkshire, one in five uh, people in West Yorkshire won't be able to pay their bills going forward. Another 15% will be able Traffic to pay their bills, but they then won't have any money left at the end of the week. So this is going to be actually catastrophic. Those families that are in, that are working will end up in poverty, and those in poverty will end up in penury. And it's, it's not just me. You have heard Martin Lewis and others talk about this catastrophe, and and NHS leaders only yesterday were saying that people will die because of the cost of living crisis. Okay. So what do you think needs to be done to John's question? Well, I would say that as the mayor, I have certain tools. Um, one of those tools is uh, working and settings. with companies, we're slashing bus fares to two pounds, we're making sure that people... It's pretty much your standard Mitsubishi infotainment system, so, they can get to work, their kids so it's pretty simple to use. We've also had a win working with other mayors in the north. We forced a U-turn on the government so they continue the bus reco recovery grant, so buses aren't going to be slashed across the north so people can actually get to opportunity and earn money but also it's about supporting business that they are incredibly worried about the cost of living crisis and we're uh, supporting them with USB input so and power outlet green uh, processes so they can save money on their energy bills heated and seats communities community groups like yours John we're supporting them to make sure that they don't keel over because you're going to be needed more than ever. And, okay. and if I may just say finally, we have to recall Parliament. This is an absolute crisis about to happen. Mark. <clears throat> Four-wheel drive controls. I will also High and low range. Uh, John, thank you for all you do and for your efforts uh, supporting those people that, that uh, need that level of support. But you know, I think coming out of a global pandemic and Putin's invasion of Ukraine and what that is doing to global energy and food prices is going to put a huge strain on, on the global economy and of which the UK of course will feel those, feel those pressures. Uh, to answer the question directly, the way out of poverty has to be through work. The work has to pay in order to find your way to a, a better life and to aspire out of that. One way in which the government can help directly is by reducing the amount of tax which, uh, Audio controls, hands-free phone controls, and cruise control. What the government would like to try and continue to do, so they can keep more of your wages. But of course, that is also dependent upon there being high-quality, high-skilled jobs within the community for people to be able to go to and, and earn those salaries. And I think. Uh, if you look at some of the projects that are coming forward around the Morecambe area, like the Eden project, which is uh, quite close to, to coming, I think that's a huge opportunity for people to earn more money and to be able to keep more of that cash for themselves. Okay, we may walk back to the Eden project. Who knows? It's a Pretty amazing vehicle. vehicle. I just want to pick you up on one thing you said, Mark, about uh, wages. We have to think about Let's go ahead and shut her down. Go and check out the rest of the vehicle, shall we?
Absolutely massive loading bay. Well viewers, thanks so much for watching this in-depth tour of this 2016 Mitsubishi L200 and a big thanks to the D-Side Motor Centre for allowing me to come and film it. Be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed it and peace out.